remember the whole um, Peter Thiel thing about Trump, about Trump, like um, people take him, his, his detractors take him literally, but not seriously. And his fans mm-hmm. take him seriously, but not literally. I think it's the same with conspiracy theories is you ought to take them seriously, but not literally. The reason I thought this would be interesting to discuss, um, the reason I thought discussing rationalism versus esotericism would be interesting to discuss because, you know, I don't know about you, but my journey, I very much sort of bounced back between the two poles, right? So you start off red pilling, perhaps you're too rationalistic. You're just talking about how the libs have no logic, liberal logic, Twitter account. You love retweeting that. And then perhaps you think you get a bit more cynical. You start to realize that you didn't have any frame for understanding what's going on. And then you sort of really go down perhaps the most wacko end where you see everything down the lens of like a multi-generational, maybe 2000 year, one long arc to this moment, to this, to this moment, to this set of policies from the cabal and whatnot. And then, you know, in my particular case, you start realizing actually just from looking at like theory, whether it's like political theory, whatnot, um, understanding the the incentives driving people, um, perhaps throwing in the notion that, okay, there is scope for the intelligence services kind of like throwing stuff out there to confuse people. You realize, okay, there is like a decent flaw that I can, I can set under, you know, in terms of like the, the sort of the vanilla-ness of the explanation for what's going on. Um, and yeah, I very much try and keep a healthy balance between, between the two. Um, you've obviously been, in this uh, scene a bit longer. And I suppose you, you know, you tend to lean more towards esotericism um, and, and kind of deeper conspiracy theories, uh, that sort of frame for making sense of things. But what, what's your sort of general take on this, on this question? Oh yeah. It's a, it's a, a huge one. So I think I tend to think of it as like, um, you've got to discriminate maybe between like rationalism as a, as a mode of inquiry and rationalism as a as a as a metaphysic you know as a, okay. as a frame as a frame of your reality that's a good and, point yeah and i think if you if you you know I, and i think insofar as you know we can be divided into people who have that rationalist frame for reality or that esoteric frame for reality that supra rationalist frame for reality I think you can find people in 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 both camps who are more or less rationalistic in their like um quotidian approach you know their their mm. uh, their, their microcosmic kind of um investigations um but if you look at it as like the kind of um the meta framing for 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 how you see things um you know I think it's a really really um profound difference and one thing that I've always been struck by for the rationalistic metaphysic and its relationship to conspiracy theory um, is that, you know, f- from the sort of birth of, um, of, 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 of rationalism, I mean, you know, call it the Enlightenment, you know, you had various disciplines, various approaches to knowledge and to explaining reality which depended upon a principle of of accidental causal emergence, right? Mm. Evolution being a you know a, a conspicuous example of it, but um, then you know you know um, rationalistic cosmology had the same basic principles as evolution, right? You have um, one thing affects another affects another. It's it's effectively driven by materialism, which is synonymous with with accidental development and emergence. And there you are, your 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 reality, the human reality that we all experience, um, which we call history, is 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 backed by these um cosmologies, these these origin stories, which are rationalistic. You know, um we we emerge from the infinity of time and matter, first of all in space and 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 then as organisms. Um, but the way we live that reality is in history, right? These are these are, these are hypotheses, whatever you say. You know, nobody can 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 establish. No, nobody can um, um, completely corroborate that they exist. That they're that they're factual. You know, they they might mm. be more or less credible, but you know, nobody can say that they're true. They're all they're all past hypotheses. But then, the present that we exist is is the present of history. Is the present of politics, right? That is something we all live within. That is something we all experience all the time. And I think 
what rationalistic history has tended to do um well the the the, the, the birth of um contemporary history is apply the same principles to um to power and politics and the the, the movement of, of 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 human civilizations through the centuries right they it becomes a, pro, a an effectively accidental process there's no guiding teleology of any sort there's no kind of um supratemporal mind which is channeling and directing human history um whether it's uh whether that's divine or malign or or, or some kind of combination of both mm. um you know he, we, we we just see things as 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 more or less accidental in place of kind of material materialism per se we have the kind of equivalent materialism where it's like it's economic factors it's social factors fundamentally it's it's accidental factors that are mm. just you know one thing then the other one thing then the other and so history is a kind of um a perpetual present which is just kind of um fed by all of these accidental factors right where you know and 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 to 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 try and see behind that present and to see any kind of guiding teleology becomes a kind of epistemological error you know yeah. like a, 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 a philosophical error that's the that's the rationalistic hypothesis and this is why i think the um emergence of of conspiracy theory you know through the 20th century and then arguably picking up particular importance in the west in the 21st century to to the degree that it is you know frequently framed the conspiracy theorist conspiracy theory is is, is frequently fr framed by elites as the the number one threat to our civilization right it is, yeah besides, besides yeah i mean but they're, right, yeah. they're very much equating it with you know domestic terrorism now so absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. We, we 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 are uh we are the, the number one threat to ourselves right we are the mm. public enemy number one and and you know the, the, what's inferred is that it's it's both like a kind of it's a philosophical error, it's an epistemological error, it's a it's a form of mental illness, it's a it's a it's a it's a political or moral transgression. It's all of these things rolled into one, and but it's significant enough to receive kind of constant attention. You know, in in in, in mainstream discourse, in mainstream media, in in, in intelligence agencies, in in policing of, of of thought and media, you know, this is as, as we just said that that main main focus. It is it is it is. In fact, I think you know, if you were to weigh money spent on it, fighting it, so to speak, as against money spent fighting terrorism in the last ten years or something, you know, I think it would vastly outweigh it. And you know, what it kind of highlights is not only its significance, but it's it's regardless of its practical threat, it's um symbolic threat. You know, to um, to to secular society or, or to the yeah. society that we live in, you know, it is it it, it embodies everything that but was left out of this episteme of this very you know of this post enlightenment evolving firm materialist worldview. Somehow, the the, the conspiracy theory, which was a, you know is, is applied as a specific approach to history brings with it often if you speak to people who are more esoterically inclined so to speak um brings with it a whole host of other skepticisms and suppositions about mainstream knowledge and about mainstream reality and and i think the 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 the, the way we can understand that distinction is that conspiracy theory is it is the esoteric approach to history which is to say it's the anti-rationalist approach to his history which is to say it's history with a teleology whatever mm. that teleology is it's something that transcends the present that transcends the lifespans of everybody who currently has power you know however that works whether it's some abstract aim which is which is passed on whether it's it's god or the devil or or entities or or or, or, or something else you know there is an x factor which is which 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 is supratemporal and you know those are the, i think the, the fundamental differences and the problem is what is that supratemporal quality where does it sit where does it live because it's so open-ended that there's there's no way to measure or, or police one's freedom just as if like rationalism has the inverse um uh problem right there's it, it's so narrow 
it mm. has to preclude the possibility of anything that's supra rational any anything that can't be easily explained causally is a huge threat to it you know uh, conspiracy theory is, is is the opposite esotericism is the opposite wow i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't expecting um you to come with such a thoroughly deep answer um yeah i mean it's i hadn't really thought of it in that sense like i understand it i understand it um as a threat to the status quo in the sense that it engenders um you know like conspiracy theories engender mistrust and and whatnot but that's very interesting the way that you frame it as like a risk because it it as sort of like it acknowledges the spiritual nature of mainstream truth right in the sense of like of the material truth of the rationalistic kind of um enlightenment driven um i guess religion that governs society right and so it's um didn't kind of uh, yeah i never kind of perceived it in that way as a, as a sort of a, as an antidote to that right um and and it's kind of very much kind of butting its heads directly on that level like on a spiritual level right and I, I understood it kind of spoke to people's spiritual inclinations and 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 a sort of more um more sub- subconscious subliminal sense for for the forces going on but it's it is interesting to consider it as like a a, a directly um like opposing um like kind of spiritual force right um to to what to what mainstream society has um, and, and and how s- mainstream society kind of um, perpetuates itself and rationalizes its its rule and and how our elites rationalized uh, their you know their existence their 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 status at the top of the pile particularly this is really accelerated now with you know we saw it with COVID and and the climate stuff so that's an interesting way to put it um, you know definitely I think it it seems pretty evident that conspiracy theorists are are right about the outlines of a lot of stuff. Um, I think the way that you frame it is interesting because being able to distinguish between the worldview and the the kind of um, mode of inquiry, um, because I think one of the issues that conspiracy theorists fall into is they don't, and uh, they do not quite understand what these theories what are and what they ultimately mean, right? Um, so, it, I think a lot of them kind of actually do so. Basically, you're you're very screwed if you take these esotericist explanations for what's going on and you you address them from a from a kind of very rationalistic perspective, right? So you're kind of you take things very literally, right? Remember the whole um, Peter Thiel thing about Trump about Trump, like um, people take him his his detractors take him literally but not seriously. And his fans take him seriously, but not literally. I think it's the same with conspiracy theories is you ought to take them seriously, but not literally a lot of them. Yeah. And I think what hap- I think when it can be, um, it can be harmful when, yeah, when people, particularly when you've got your family's survival, you've got, you've got to think about jobs. You've got to think practically about actually, if you're interested in such things, if you're actually practically thinking about amounting a political opposition, you know, you have to, um, you have to be engaging in the real world. And I think that's part of why, um, where it can go wrong, right? Like a, a lot of us were talking in the winter of 2021 about how it'd be a winter of, you know, like there, you know, there was stuff floating around about internment camps in Australia. Then people go, you just wait till this winter when everyone's dropping dead in the mm-hmm. street and, and whatnot. And none of these things came to pass. Right. And we're going to have CBD, you know, we're going to have infinite lockdowns and, you know, we're going to have CBDCs by next summer and there's going to be a debt default by next summer and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Yeah. And it's clear to see how these things are um, very damaging to like help the regime help because they not only um, kind of confuse you, they make you in, incapable of proper action, but they also have served to delegitimize you in the eyes of potential allies, in the eyes of the rest of society and whatnot. And so this is where it's, um, it can go wrong. Now, I was um yeah I was pretty I was pretty surprised by kind of how how all encompassing your you know your what you said was it's a very interesting way to to kind of go about it right if you understand that look what these things mean is that no life is not accidental that humans that the the way that people the spirit that governs the society matters right um yeah. and if you you frame things like that then you realize well yes 
when you do give everything up to materialism, um, then you are basically, you are turning your back on the good, right? So you are getting involved in stuff that is that might be satanic. When you do um, orientate your economy around speculation, around the financialization of everything, um, then you are being, you are basically suffering for the love of money, right? And so it might as well be a 3000 old Babylonian cabal that are running things because for all intents and purposes, in terms of the direction of travel, Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's ultimately what is informing things, and that's where things are, things are going to go. And society will continue to decay, whether it is a set a set of emergent phenomena, phenomena, or actually one specific well organized agent that's been acting for you know for centuries. Um, so those those are just some thoughts I think on on helping um, helping balance it out. And um, yeah. got got a few other th- couple of other things to say, but I just thought. If, wanted to um no, you know, I think, I think, pass I think, the ball think, back to you in case you had anything to say i think you're I, right to be um suspicious of uh of the um <laughs> utility of conspiracy theorists right because in so far as they reclaim the religious worldview is it's a way of reclaiming and contemporalizing is that what Con- <laughs> making contemporary <laughs> the the religious worldview um they are prone to the um to some of the uh flaws of 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 religious people which is you know as you've just just, one is a kind of maybe an except you know maybe it's not right to call it flaws characteristics shall we say historical characteristics one is a tendency towards um catastrophizing you Mm. know uh to a kind of perpetual millennial millenarianism you know where you think the world's always about to end you know which is by the way the constant um, consciousness of conspiracy theorists I kind of felt like what what happened last year and there was a lot of scary shit happening last year and I almost feel like we came out of last year um with our with our freedom partially restored was was something of a of a, of a fluke perhaps even a sort of divine intervention right but n- nonetheless we did come out of it as you as you say some of the worst things that were anticipated even directly from the jab as as bad as I would argue that that's been did not precisely come to pass or have not come to pass. Yet. And I, I will and, ask, I will ask to by saying, you know, it's quite possible that in a few years there is some, you know, there is some toll, but still there is, there has been a dissonance yeah. between what we were saying was going to happen. Yeah. Or if you, if you look at the people who say and expect the very worst thing to happen and you contrast that with how things panned out six, 12 months later, I think it's fair to say that um, their, their, their negativity their expectations were um uh, were not met and and i think that's always true and i think if you spoke if you speak to the same people today they'll tell you the next six months everything's going to be collapsed and terrible they, yeah they, they won't be bothered about what hasn't come to pass they'll be looking with yeah grim expectation at the, the near future very very um religious mindset you know um, yeah the mindset of zealots you know of religious zealots you know there, there's always an expectation but we are in the last days you know, there's always there's always very very grim and severe uh, sense of the stakes and 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 the coming events. You know, it's just it's just a, sort of a truism. And the other um the other thing is, you know, um there's it brings with it as it would relate to politics a nihil uh, very quickly it brings with it a nihilism. You know, um, yeah. You know, there very quickly a, a rejection of political labels of parties of organizations because these are all like of the world you know as, as, as would be the religious way of thinking and talking about them you know where you find you know um some sort of you know traditional english conservative anglicanism or something you know these are these are all religious forms which are probably more world than religion you know and uh you know they're they're, they're 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 kind of very tamed and moderated religious forms that almost exist within the secular religious consciousness mm. and but what where where you get that kind of that pull towards the real religious mentality you know um catastrophic and irrational um it, it will tend to 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 reject these things very very strongly and i don't i don't think they make for you know if you if you are aiming to to build a more a more rational fair system to improve things to ameliorate things you know um i don't think you'll find too many um allies in the among the uh, esotericists or too too many steadfast allies you know yeah 
um, or organizing allies, if you will, you know, uh, that would be my, my assumption. Yeah. You know, that that's well put. And, you know, if you, you consider, you consider from the, you know, from the regime's perspective, um, you know, and, and you see this with certain, you know, certain, you know, there's big debate amongst Christians. There always has been about whether you should engage with the world or whether you should turn your back on it. Right. Um, and, and so there seems to be a more meta thing here about the nature of some religions or kind of spiritual doctrines where you can kind of go in different ways. Some of them do very much cause you to retreat from, from the world. And I think it's perfectly, perfectly fine to, um, to realize that this is not everything. Um, and it depends on what you, depends on what your goals are. But I think a lot of people are politically motivated. Um, you know, they wouldn't, um, I don't think that they would act in the way that they, they did if they weren't, but they are, yeah, it, it, it can be, um, can be somewhat misleading and you know if you think about if you're if you're the regime and you things are getting a bit tense and whatnot you know you want to kind of incentivize people to retreat from the public spaces right you you know it's essentially securing a monopoly if you're just making everyone um anyone who kind of sees the world differently think rather than kind of go around and actually try and um try and build some actual serious force um political force built around and driven motivated by different values we're just going to actually have them you know completely um move away from from any you know from from anything that's going to threaten us um so that you know it's, there's obvious incentives there and and the other thing to bear in mind is just stuff like um you know a- anything practical to do with like timelines like i think it's worth it's worth getting you know it's worth going back and you know saying that anyone who said like god these vaccines are terrible and whatnot um they're a bad thing. Look at the mRNA and whatnot. Like ultimately, the ra- there's lots of rationalists who are also going to get the wrong end of the stick about this, right? Who just refuse to to see things for what they are, and who refuse to see that this is very much a transhumanist arc that we're on, and mm-hmm. whether or not these specific vaccines have anything to do with that. Um, and I hope that doesn't get us in trouble. But I think we're being uh, we're we're actually casting doubt on the conspiracy theorist uh, view, Google. Um, but yeah, like. <laughs> Whether or not you know, I think ultimately the the conspiracy theories and whatnot are, are on. They're they're very much on something, and they have the outlines, and they have a sense the the sense that's correct. You just need to understand that anything to do with timelines, practical action. I mean, you know, you mentioned the you mentioned the Enlightenment, no doubt, and you, we can we can clearly trace the roots of everything that's going on today back to the Enlightenment, even to practical stuff like the managerial revolution, and you know, these large ration, you know, reason based superstructures that mm-hmm. run society today. It's all Enlightenment mm-hmm. thinking, right? It all goes yeah. back to them. And no doubt people 500 years ago, have along the Enlightenment, my arithmetic has failed me there, 300 years, there would have been people going, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's over now. Like we, we've basically given up our, our divine essence now we've given up on god yada 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 the world's over it might as well might as well be over that's 300 years ago in a more kind of in a more like mic micro setting there's also the financial system where people from like the 80s were going god this is unsustainable mm-hmm. and it's like well here we are then 90s unsustainable 2008 unsustainable 2019 okay really really getting unsustainable now 2020 21 you know when's you know how do we know it's not going to go on another 200 years um another 100 years another 30 years so um this is where you've got to you have to frame it properly if you want to be if you want to be someone who can actually contribute to a a tangible political cause um so yeah these are you know these are some of the things but i you know i think I, I i was priming myself to attack the the rationalist more and but you just you know you you framed it so well at the beginning that i think it i think it kind of you really put laid out the case for why esotericism is 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 powerful and valuable so well i haven't felt the need to but clearly you know there's plenty of dumb stuff about the rationalists right they'll be screaming they'll fight you can always carve a way out right you can always you can always carve out an explanation for something which isn't that's, that's kind of benign and whatnot if you want to but ultimately you have to it's not about what you're capable of doing you know can i can i find a way can i find an angle to make this not seem terrible you know ultimately you need to sometimes 
grow up and go past that and actually just listen to your gut and go like, okay, what, what's my, what, what, what are my senses telling me about, you know, where good and evil is, is resting in mm. the kind of state of affairs today? Yeah, this is, this is your, this is your metaphysic. This is your deepest felt uh, instincts about reality, right? And uh, what, what, what frames it and what sustains it. Um, so I was, I was just going to add something actually for us. I sort of remembered something I sort of left out in the overall conceptualization, which I do think is interesting. And I do think is relevant in terms of being able to ground the esoteric approach, you know, ground its credibility, um, regardless of its, of its, of its flaws. And that is um, one of the things that, uh, you know, esotericism and, and conspiracy theory, insofar as we think of the esoteric historical approach, which is to say conspiracy theories per se, um, one of the things they, they, I think, all do is they look at the ostensibly rationalistic rulers um, of the world and of, 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 of the nation, of our, of our countries and whatnot, and they um and they say that they they uh, they they put forward the supposition that the ra- the ostensible rationalism um that is uh that is claimed by these rulers actually hides a, a, a deeper esotericism right like but they are for instance you know and, and this is part of the enlightenment's dynamic itself right um people um you know there's the great book for Rosicrucian enlightenment um by the, the female author whose name escapes me very famous book and um very good book and it looks at the esotericism that birthed the enlightenment itself right the rosicrucianism the birth of freemasonry that went hand in hand with that mm. and what esotericist his his what esoteric historicism tends to do in its approach to the present and the past is to say that all of these seemingly secular forms hide their own form of occult religiosity you know and and freemasonry is 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 the dominant kind of um uh repository for those suspicions or for those theories but you know the same kind of uh, the, the, um jesuitism and and um uh anti-semitic historical theories it's the same kind of function it it it, it proposes a kind of um um a subversive religiosity you know mm. that, that that simultaneously promotes rationalistic thinking you know, in such a way as to seemingly kind of um, distill and maintain its kind of, you you, you know, unique grasp of and, and, and power over the esoteric, you know, and that that is a, and what you can say of that is it's um is it's consistently credible <laughs> do you know what i mean like when when you look at um at the moment, everybody is obviously fairly well obsessed for the last couple of years with the, with the WEF and um when you when you dig into Klaus Schwab's uh, associations and his his coat of arms and his uh, you know it, you 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 run into esotericism pretty quickly you know um it, it it is it is it is a kind of um a consistently demonstrable strange fa- aspect of power you know that it that it that it has these sort of always has these sort of um um secret ties to religiosity you know yeah. secret societies and and to esoteric thinking and to esoteric symbolism and and that, i think that kind of completes the picture of of of, of the, the way the enlightenment divides the two minds and then conspiracy kind of attempts to combine them again if you know what i mean but yeah um and that's also an interesting i think that's an important point and something to level at the rationalists whether they're the rationalists on our side yeah. or the rationalists who are like normy rationalists who who just kind of refuse to to see things um you know to see things for what they are 